Welcome back to the official Atari Games podcast. This is Jason here, joined by two special guests. We have John Carter, who's back. He is a senior arts director here at Atari and also a creative force behind uh, Neo Sprint, one of the driving creative forces, I'll say, behind Neo Sprint. John, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. I like that you said driving force, and we're talking about a driving game. Pun not intended, but you know what? Like all puns, I'm cool with it. So let's roll with it. Also joined by JP, who is the head of the developer Headless Chicken behind Neo Sprint itself. Welcome to the podcast, JP. How are you doing? Thank you. I'm doing great. Really excited to be here. I grew up with uh, an Atari VCS at my house, uh, so it's kind of really different to know that we have our first original game with Atari. So it's just really cool. It's very exciting. Now, look, normally normally we'll start and we'll jump in. We'll do a warm-up question. Uh, I'm going to change the order a little bit here. And I got to ask you to... Uh, I So all I want... You're the only person who's going to answer this question, JP. Top okay. three Atari 2600 games then. What do you got? Uh, the one that I played the most... Uh, this is because I was what like three years old when we had it with us. You don't need to justify was, yourself. Just, just own it. It was, own it. It was, space, it was space Invaders. Okay. that That's the one I played all day, every day. And it was just, it's the memory I have the most in, in, in my head. It's kind of my first game memory in my life. So it's always going to be there. That's a good one. That's a good start. All right. So you don't have a second and third then. You're just going to just gonna lean I on Space not. Invaders. All right, that's fair enough. That's fair enough. Well, thanks for joining <laughs> both of you guys. We are going to talk a lot about Neo Sprint. Uh, if you're watching on video, you'll see the stream and some gameplay going. We'll get that going in a minute. But first, let's do a little bit of housekeeping here. It's April. Lunar Lander Beyond. It's coming out April 23rd. So if you haven't done it yet, wish list it, please. Tell all your friends, tell your family, tell them to wish list it. It's free. It's easy. You click a button, you wish list it. It's there. If you want to go the extra mile, it will be. It is available for pre order on Switch and Xbox at the moment. And there is a physical edition that's up for pre order for Switch and PS5. The Switch edition comes with a very cool art book and a very cool steel book. I am biased, but it is probably one of my favorite steel books I've seen. Um, so take that for what it's worth. But hey, if you get a chance to check it out, you'll see exactly what I mean. And also, I mean, hey, look, it's the reason why we're here, right? Neo Sprint That's has right. officially been announced for all platforms coming soon at a date that we have not revealed quite yet. It will be after Lunar Lander, but you know what? It's never too soon to wish list it. When is it too soon to wish list it? Before the page exists. But the pages exist. So hit so hit up Neo Sprint on Steam. These links, by the way, will be in the description. So we make it as easy as possible. Just go over there, click the click that link, click the wish list button. And uh, and you will smash, have our smash the wish list button, right? Isn't that what we do? Sure, <laughs> I think you're supposed to smash happy. the subscribe button. I'm not yeah, really yeah, sure. I'm. The, I don't know about the wish list. Though, I'm I'm not very good at this. Uh, so you know, eventually, I think when we get to podcast fifty, it'll be more. Yeah, of a, we'll, I'll have, I'll be more of a groove. Work uh, halfway there. Yeah, and that's the uh, and yeah, and also lastly, join the Discord, uh, Atari Discord. That link is also in the description below talk about neosprint talk about other atari games and just general atari happenings also before we jump in and start streaming neosprint i do got to give kudos to john while he's here because if you've noticed there's been a little bit of a bump in our production quality in the podcast over the last few episodes and uh all of that is entirely due to john here so you know, give, give him some love. Give him some love in the comments section. Say thank you, all that stuff, because uh, it's thanks to him that this actually looks like a professional thing and not something edited by some sort of amateur guy who just happened to learn uh, Premiere out of uh, necessity. I'm talking about myself. So <laughs> whatever gets the job done. Uh, well, it's a, it's a job. It is a job well done. And speaking of a job well done, let's jump into some Neosprint, shall we? So, yes, let's do it. <clears throat> so, that is, uh, let me just take a quick timestamp here. Yes, this stays in 440, is about right. So, here we go. Last time, this is the second time we've talked about Neo Sprint on the on the podcast here. Last time it was VCS and early access, and now we are basically gearing up another pun, perhaps, to the full yeah. release. <laughs> um, 
I'm gonna, I got the build here. I'm playing it, and I'm just gonna jump in, start playing some stuff. Actually, yeah. Why don't I just jump in and I'll go into a campaign, and John or JP, one of you guys. Actually, JP, you're here. Why don't you, uh, why don't you talk a little bit about, give us some highlights about what's changed since we've entered early access. So. Uh, we've done a lot of uh, adjustments. Uh, John and, and and our design team entered um, several iterations on the difficulty curve at the beginning of the game. So, because uh, it was really, really demanding previously when you were starting the game and you would get dropped into very difficult tracks right at the get-go. And a lot of people, they either, either skip the tutorial or they just don't really care about what's happening in the tutorial. So uh, John started analyzing some of the tracks that we had further down the road. And we also made made this one specifically as our introductory um, track. Uh, just to make it, let's make something that it's simple, but teaches the players the basic concept th that we want, which is this is how you move around the track and this is how you get to be the winner. So we wanted to give players let's not call it an easy win but a way for them to feel like okay i'm i get the feeling of what this game is about so this is what we want to show them this is what we want to start like showcasing into the game so the th this is one of the first things that we added then after uh one of the things that you might notice and i see that you have it set up is the follow camera which was not on the early access at the beginning. It's something that we rolled out, I think, around January this year. Uh, it was one of the most requested things in the game. Uh, it was a lot of people just said, oh, we want a full camera. John always said, we want, I want a full <laughs> camera. And then after, uh, this was the original camera. Yep. As, so I just as brought this up set. as uh, if you're watching the video, you can see now what it was. Oh man, there's a bit of a wow. I just, I'm like uh, riding this uh, definitely not Mini Cooper. Um, <laughs> just kind of rode him around the corner there. <laughs> it's um, a sleeper. It, it looks like a Mini, but it's. Yeah. So, yeah, as your point, like I just wanted to show this as a bit of a compare and contrast, and then I'm going to just quick, right, quickly go right Exactly. Back. And this is this is one of the things that a lot of the folks uh, playing the, the early access really enjoyed. And it's something that made the game, uh, the, the campaign game, uh, a different experience. So, whenever players are, are going through it, they can enjoy a closer look at some of the assets in the game, some of the tracks, and just even just get that closer experience. I know it's a kind of a little bit of a de departure from the from the original games where every track was always everything on screen and you still get that experience if you want, but we wanted to give players that uh, ability to get multiple uh, choices here. And as you can see, uh, a lot of the stuff that we've been doing again with the difficulty curve is just to start in start introducing new track pieces for example this one introduces that the that how do you call this the pin curve john yeah that one that it's curve, like maybe yeah yes that one the, right there, yeah. The, the hairpin curve which is like a, one of the closest it, it just has one but it's one of those tracks that you go like oh this is something new this is something that right. i did not do on the last two tracks and again it's just to introduce one mechanic in order for players to start getting used to it without it being frustratingly hard. Yeah. Um, it's very hard to, to it. So AI is one of those things that you notice when it's not working, but you know, you don't notice it when it's working just fine. Um, the game currently has a setup for the AI that allows it to use a biorhythm. Uh, that means that as players go through each one of the tracks or each one of the campaign runs, one of the complaints we heard from, or not complaints, one of the requests that we heard from players was that every tr every time that we're racing, it feels like the AI is just following the same line. And if I don't do something, the game will just play exactly like the same every time. So uh, one of our AI programmers, uh, Sergio, he implemented a biorhythm system that allows the AI to make some mistakes. It allows it to take different decisions throughout the, the, the tracks so that every time that you're racing, you don't see an exact carbon copy of the last run that you took. Yeah, yeah and I would like to say that um, 
because we have a very um, robust track builder in here, there were a lot of things, it, you know, if you had a preset track, it'd be a lot easier, air quotes, to do the AI. But since we're going to have tracks with gap jumps and long distance jumps and drop offs, like that creates a real challenge, I would think, for, for getting the AI to be able to to handle all different types of tracks that, that we're going to be able to to race in this game. Yeah, I could imagine. And I imagine like in the in the early access, there's probably some things that revealed itself when you had more people trying to break the systems to expose even more issues. Yep. And then I'm sure when it rolls out to more people, there's going to be more people trying to break <laughs> it or showing some really cool or interesting or weird or unexpected behavior with the AI. So that's pretty cool. It was it was it was really interesting going through the Nintendo certification. Those guys really broke it. They just <laughs> went right at it. <laughs> They just they just decided, hey, we'll find the weirdest kind of bugs, we'll find the weirdest kind of things, and we'll just make sure that these guys know it. Um, it was it was pretty interesting just seeing how they how they found a lot of the stuff that we couldn't find. Yeah, uh, Nintendo, Nintendo certification is always good about that. They uh, they will certainly find some interesting things. I remember they once sent me a build a a bug with twelve steps to reproduce. <laughs> And I thought this is this is impressive that you've actually done this. I don't know why you did that. I mean, some of them were like, "Yeah," and then and then do this and spin around and uh, and walk outside, walk down the street, then come back, and then when you play it, you'll realize you're like, oh, "Okay, this is too much." Um, but you know, the, the, the you, last oh, go ahead. The, the, the last bug that we had was for me. It was interesting. Uh, we've been doing Switch games for the last uh, since it since it's it launched we've been doing switch games and this was the first time that i had run into something as weird as this one because it just went through certification everything was fine everything was going flying with colors and then when they tested it on a retail kit the game crashed and then yeah. they couldn't they couldn't provide us with a crash dub or they couldn't provide us with anything that was like okay this one does not work or this one does work so it was just very weird just trying to get that one fixed yeah that sounds weird so i've uh i've just jumped into uh one of these custom tracks john this is not the one that you've just made this is not I'm, but i, I, I saw this one and it looked intriguing so i'm gonna check it out it's called snake jump i think is what it's snake called. jump yeah i'm wondering how they this is somebody oh, no. pushing it. Oh, oh no pushing it to the limit Did, will oh, that man. count though will that count no way no there's no way I didn't I didn't even touch it, man. Sneaked my uh, my little car is going around. By the way, again, if you uh, if you watch the video on YouTube, you can actually see uh, see what I'm doing here. Yeah, uh, I haven't raced missed, this one yet. You missed the jump. <laughs> I sure did. Yeah, I, I was going too fast, I suppose. All right, here we go. Let's try to go square here. There we go. I like and to go and and uh, race on other people's tracks and and put up the top time. So there we go. This is a super clever one. I like it. Is the, very, uh, I didn't even know you could do that. <laughs> yeah, this is awesome. Like, this is a good example of showing what people can do yeah. in uh, in that early access. Um, yeah, this is uh, this is a very cool track. And John, I know we you could, made one. We could check who made it. Maybe it was done by someone from let's from say, the VCS oh, community. Yeah, let's go back to the track gallery. Yeah, I just uh, put together Sahara Sands. Was one I did earlier today. So this or is Sahara right. Speed. Oh, this is done by Sam. Sam did this oh, on our <laughs> side. Yeah, that Smoke Porky. It. Yeah, that, that definitely came from the mind of a madman. And Sam <laughs> Sam definitely qualifies as said madman. So that's uh, that's great. So it was that's funny. Really at, cool. at, uh, at PAX East, Ethan and I, um, our, uh, our game director, our VP of games, we started just like, we we had it on like a time trial. And then we were just trying like skateboard tricks, like on <laughs> like to try to do like a backside 180 over the gap and everything. It was It was fun. <laughs> this is maybe not the way the game was intended to be played, but uh, so what car should I use for this one, John? This I'm about to play your track that you just designed today for this so specific podcast. One, one, so one small detail here, and I don't know if, if if you've noticed that the name of the cars, uh, John helped us with the name of the cars. They are all oh, yeah. uh, related to Atari IPs. Yeah. So well, let's give us well the quote tile is easy, so uh, that's that's uh, yours. Yeah, and then what's the the twenty six hundred is obvious. What's NB stand for? Let's see if you can figure it out. What what initials NB would would make sense with Atari? Uh, well, Nolan uh, Bushnell. Oh, of course. 
Havoc, major havoc. So this one, um, I actually got a chance to meet Owen Rubin, who's a very oh, nice okay. guy. And yeah. so Major Havoc was designed by Owen Rubin. And uh, the original name of Major Havoc was Alpha One. So that's why the one is at the end. So it gets very esoteric. Dude, I love that. I love, <laughs> you know, somebody somebody was asked me recently, oh, do you put any Easter eggs in your games? Come and on. there was a few where I said, well, yeah, some are like blatantly obvious, but this game might actually have the most subtle Easter eggs because John really has like some of the most like deep Atari knowledge of anybody else here. So if there's anybody to sprinkle in some odd subtlety stuff, like, yeah, I would, I didn't think that from the N- NB oh. or OR, any of those things. The lights just went off in the room over there. So yeah. once John waves his arm, they should theoretically come back on. We have a weird timer in our office where, uh, there yeah, go. there you go. They're back. They're back. All right, cool. We haven't paid um, our electric bill. <laughs> like, no, yeah, exactly. Didn't. I'm going to use, uh, yeah, man, I don't know what card. Let's use this one. I'm going to feel like I'm going to pretend I'm in Fast and Furious. And then I'm going to. That's no, my Dukes favorite Hazard. one. Do the, yeah, this one, the, the Stella HS. Yeah. Yes. People, people in packs were calling this the Homer Simpson mobile. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's my favorite one. That's the, that's exactly the reason. That's what HS stands for. The, the <laughs> video doesn't... intros also, those camera pans, that's also a new thing for this uh, build, right? I don't think that was there. Or was that yes. there in the early access? It wasn't the no. very first, but it was before we put the zoom cam in, I believe. But JP. Yes, but we we did we did make uh, the 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 introduction section to be more dynamic. So it just uh, so the main it takes different shots from different places in the map uh, dynamically. So it's not like every, so every track is going to have its own introduction camera that it's different from all the other ones. Yeah. Yeah. It's so cool. Oh, there's a, a jump track. here. It's going to be, there's the tough jump right there. The jump to the flat. Yeah. It's tough for people who aren't good at the game. I'm like, oh, you got <laughs> it. Yeah. yeah, I know. Yeah, that's right. I got, I got this locked down. Oh man. Yeah, this, this thing was- is like, it's some my car is on fire right now. Like it is going absolutely nuts because of all these uh, ups and downs and pot. Oh my god, that guy! It's just, a demanding uh, track. <laughs> yeah, seriously, it's very cool though. Lots of lots of winding turns. It kind of uses it uses nearly all the all the pieces. I think it doesn't use that. What's that sloping curve? Oh yeah, I didn't I didn't use the banked ones. I'm a big fan of the really Bank long. Turns. Like here's a long straightaway. Yeah, I like there's, that. There's also a long like lazy turn. Um, which were pieces, I think there were some of the last oh, no. track pieces we added. Um, but those are some of my favorites. Good reset there. Yeah. Good use of the reset. That's an important button. Yeah. Especially on at- a track like this. I had to just do a, a guess and be like, wait, where was it again? Right there. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff here. John, you know, you mentioned PAX East. Uh, you know, we were over there. Some of you uh, actually got to meet a at least one listener who I remember. And that was, that was a pretty cool and surreal moment. That was the first time that's ever happened. Um, and that, that was awesome. But we had, we had four player Neo sprint on display. And what was the, uh, what did you learn? What did you find? Any good, uh, any good stories from people playing the game on the show floor? Well, um, we, we got a couple super fans. There was a guy who came by the first day, came by about three, three times, three or four times. Brought a, brought a different group of, of friends. He was like our our motivational dancer, <laughs> you know? and he's like, "This is <laughs> this is the best game of the show. This is the best game of the show." And so, love it. So that felt really good because so this the show starts right, and so we're in there at nine a.m. and so I'm sitting there and there's nobody around, and I'm like, "Oh wow, is like is it just going to be me in this game?" And then like somebody told me, "Oh, the doors don't open till 10. And I was like, oh, okay, good. And then once the doors opened, we had like a steady stream of uh, of players. And it was also interesting to see uh, new players. There, there were players who obviously are very used to controlling a car in this type of perspective. So there were there were a lot of people who were like, oh yeah, like like I remember playing uh, I remember playing like RC Pro Am, and I, a lot of people were talking about. Um, rock and roll racing that's when i heard a lot which which i was like not even on my list so i gotta look up rock and roll racing but um they were like oh this is amazing that that we're bringing these games back and um you know i had i had walked the show floor of pax before the show opened and i didn't see any game there that was 
remotely like this. So we definitely uh, were unique and that, that was a lot of fun. But um, yeah, m- making all the changes to the difficulty in the beginning was was a, a great move on our part because some of the newer players were able to pick it up um, pretty quickly compared to the the uh, the lifers who had who had played a lot of these top down racers before. So it was great. I think there there were like a handful of people who who struggled, but it was it mostly was kids. You I think you were saying small. right? Like a lot of a lot of kids. Yeah, of, and I think yeah. it's it, oh my god, <laughs> kids kids haven't driven a car at all yet, right? And and so for some people, it's like left is left for the car, not for you. You know, like, it, so it's always left is always left, right is always right. But some people, once the car was in a different uh, orientation, they wanted the controls to be like mirrored or it was, it was just very interesting. But that was something we had learned early in testing. And, and I'm glad that we have adjusted um, our game for it. Yeah. Totally. Yep. It's one got- of, one of the first things that that, that we saw that it, it it can always be a little bit challenging on on getting yourself because the idea was let's make the drive in in the game and controlling the cars in the game as if you were sitting in the driver's seat. So mm-hmm. it the only the only thing that might enter into that challenging section is for people to put themselves into that virtual position because mm. basically what we're asking players is that okay you need to imagine yourself there so they need to be constantly imagining themselves in the car cockpit in order to be able to move accordingly to the car but i feel like a lot of people get used to it after a couple of of, of races like mm-hmm. after oh, yeah. five six races people are already able to just okay oh i get it i am in the car so i can move around in the car yeah, yeah, it's decidedly and, old school. Yeah, in that sense. And you could see, like, people people really enjoyed kind of developing the new skill. And it was like, well, now you could actually go and and you could start playing with uh, remote control cars. We, I don't think we were really thinking that this game was going to be a remote control car game, but but after playing it a bit, I'm like, oh yeah, it kind of is, I guess. Yeah. yeah, totally. That perspective lends itself well to that to wrap your head around what is how left is always turning left, despite of the despite the perspective. You know, it's funny exactly. that we had this and uh, Lunar Lander at the same time because, you know, Lunar Lander was also is also a game that really challenges players with, uh, you know, kind of older controller styles that they don't do nowadays. And yet, when people were playing, when people were playing that game and they were trying the ship uh, that was very easy to control, they were often going back to the one that was more traditional because they liked that challenge, they liked that style, they liked that feel because it was so different. So That's cool. Uh, can you can you go can you go into the track yeah, builder? Yeah. Oh, yeah. For sure. Good call. Because there, there's there's something I just want to to point out for players. That looks good. Oh, we got we have the tutorial for it. We have the Earl. tutorial. It's a new build on. A... Yeah. All right. Here we go. Where so, should I... no. Just just wanted to point out one thing. That if you see the campaign, there's three cups, but you see here you have four biomes. Mm-hmm. Just keep that in mind. <laughs> All right. Fair enough. Well, I, I can start building some stuff just to kind of show people. Did anything change to the track builder for uh, the over jumps? The, course? the jumps did. Yes. Yeah? Yes, we we retooled we retooled the jump system in order to try to make it a little bit more seamless and make it easier for for players to just because uh, one of the things that we wanted to do uh, with 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 jumps was that if you see it as that the jump should fit, it should fit, mm-hmm. and that's kind of what we we've been trying to aim for when we're when we're trying to build the tracks. Trying to oh man, what did I just do? Oh God, I've already uh, broken. It's deconstructing. You I've already broken. Yeah, yeah, definitely need to start. There you go. Yeah, I wanted, I wanted to do that. There we go. Okay, cool. I wanted to make something that kind of like uh, winds in on itself. Yeah, okay. you can do that either right or left. Yeah, yeah. I just uh, haven't haven't done this in a while. Oh, there we go. That's what I was looking for. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Yeah. Um. Yeah. The track builder is cool. It's still it's still awesome. It's still a very cool thing. Um. Yeah, so how what was the difference with the jumps then? Can you elaborate on that? So um, originally we had a system that was like, it would tell you, you set up a jump 
and then you need it to set it its its next part uh, right next to it. Uh, right now, it just points at you that there is a jump and there is there it needs a landing place. It doesn't really look for another piece or another jump piece in order for it to be a landing place. It just tells you, okay, this is how far off you're gonna put it, and this is this is how it's gonna work on the on the jump end. So it's more on the logical part on. If you see that it's going to make the jump, it should be a valid jump. Mm-hmm. Okay. Instead That's of pretty cool. being... Because previously the system was... Um, how do you say this? Very... Rigid? Yes. It, you, had to, you, had to make the, you had to make the jump. If you put a jump piece, you had to make the jump. Right mm. now, you can create the jump and just... If if it gets to wherever it needs to go, then it's good. Yeah, okay. you, you'd find yourself with you'd finish your track and you'd be like, well, why is this not valid? And so uh, now exactly. with the new jump system, it, it works a lot better. Oh, cool! It's good stuff. Uh, <clears> and it's like you know, I've I've built so many tracks in this, yes. and it's like a, I feel like I could build a track in like under three minutes, probably. <laughs> Uh, yeah, probably, no doubt, a lot faster than I can. That's for sure. That's all right, though. So, I mean, you, you, you probably haven't built many tracks in this game yet. So. No, no, I have not. Uh, <laughs> so not, you, not, you, not because I, you know, don't want to. It's just uh, you see, get, getting for example that piece that you just set up that was tricky at the beginning because since we're doing a grid based system, you're basically there using two grids at the same time so we had to rewrite some of this some of the code on the track builder itself for, in order for it to be able to uh allow players to do those things like you see those that are really like tightly uh, fit there those we yeah. have to like manually tell the code okay this is allowed don't worry we know that it's invading the other place but this is allowed we call that cheating the grid <laughs> exactly Oh and God. that was this important because is... um, in order to get the maximum amount of pieces into a space. Also, you, you'd you be in a situation where like, this looks like it should work. And they'd be like, yeah, it does. So that we, we were identifying those in, those edge cases and, and trying to make sure that uh, we, the one thing we didn't want to do is like give you a creative tool and then stifle your creativity. You know? Yeah, totally. Exactly. I mean, that's huge, especially, especially when you're going to have the, uh, you know, when you when you have this creator tool, the more the more power let's, you let's give see, somebody, the more flexibility. Let's see you try to beat. Let's see you try to beat John's time. On what? On the time trial. Yeah, oh, you okay. if you go, you could do a time trial and you could race. Um, I put up a pretty easy time on the one I just built, but uh, you could try that one. All right, so let's see. Yeah. So and I can't one? defend my my time. I was right, hoping to find not... one that was in a uh, that was in like a snow environment, just so I could show that one off. That's the last environment that I haven't. I shown think off you can yet. filter it. Oh, there is it. one. Yeah, you could filter it by environment. I made one called Chervania, I think, for the uh, ski area in Switzerland. I think it is. Oh, there it is. Good. It's got a little jump. This one, Chervania. Yeah. All right, here we go. So this one, and then you race all night. Yeah, there we go. You could oh, try yeah. to beat Yorgle Incorporated. That's me. 1735 okay. that's a pretty respectable time well, i need i need to use my go-to uh my sunshine this one the tropics my so tropics. there are there are um time trials for the they're called neo challenges and um you know i probably have 200 plus hours in this thing and uh even for me to beat some of the golds is like it's a challenge so once you've you've mastered the game stuff like a uh, obstacle course or time trial is is like a new level of challenge yeah so this is, even some of them I was like i'm not sure you can even beat this and then i beat it i was like yeah you can and it felt great so, so what is what is the top time here how do i see that though oh, uh, number four in the leaderboard okay cool i just saw that okay sweet you got on the leaderboard great you're in the top okay. five but you're going to try to beat 17 seconds 17 and a half seconds basically all right. So you got to shave off about four seconds. All right. Well, I just got number two. Yeah. All right. This I I feel like I can't do it in this car. This feels so like the right now long... you're racing against the number one. 
Oh, okay, got it. So it shows you the next in line. Is yeah, that what exactly. You're so yeah, now you have oh, to be, cool. Okay. Yeah, seventeen thirty-five. So, for example, what we do here uh, with the time trial is that if you don't select at the right at the at the main menu, if you don't select which ghost you want to race against, and you don't have a time, it will take you one lap in order to get the first time, and then it will show you the ghost that it's further up on that run that you just did. And then it will just keep showing you the next one that you need to beat. Okay, got it. Well, this is definitely my worst time, so that's cool. <laughs> uh, I I feel like I feel like I am getting worse the more I play this. <laughs> like I don't know what happened. I I feel like I that started reminds really me of strong. watercolor class in, in college. <laughs> yeah. and, my and, first painting and, was amazing, and then it just got worse and worse. The teacher <laughs> told me that too. He's like, I don't know what happened. You started off so strong. And- you know what I need? I need um, I need to change my car. I think that's my problem. I'm going to try this again. With uh, poor car. craftsman blames his tools. <laughs> yep. <laughs> You're right. That's exactly what I'm doing. Don't question it. All right. Here we go. So one of my favorite things is to go on and, and race somebody, so, somebody else's track and put up the top time on there. All right. I feel like this one. And once this is out and there's a lot more players, I, I suspect that that's going to be. A popular feature. Okay, my my min, my uh, purple, not definitely not Mini Cooper is uh, this is going to bring me to victory because I feel like this one with the amount of turns, it's more about the acceleration and the steering. So yes. that seems like a better option. Now, as you can see, I'm really good at navigating these turns very slowly, which is not the best strategy for with the Mini Cooper. Track. Yeah, it's the, a Mini Cooper. That's not a Mini Cooper. Definitely not Mini Cooper. Definitely not a Mini Cooper. Looks definitely nothing not a like Mini Cooper. It looks nothing like a Mini Cooper. Don't sue us, Mini. It's, oh no! Oh, oh no! Out. All right, I'm gonna try one more lap on this one. I gotta gotta get that head start because that first lap, like you can't, you can never beat it on the first lap because you need that. You can't. You need that acceleration going into the starting line. That's do a critical. You- Feature. Do you want to know a trick you could do though that we no, were doing I... at PAX? So sure. the, the time will not start until you've crossed the uh the finish line. So Sam and I would go in reverse. Oh you could reverse. So oh could, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we could get a flying start. So oh, we could... here we go. No. Oh. Number two. Oh, I thought oh right. I thought the ghost I was 18, going against 18 points. No, That's you were against uh, respectable. number two. <laughs> I came pretty close though. That was you uh, yes. You, had eight, you came within like a second, which like is point pretty... seven. Yeah. Your current your current record is eight eighteen seconds. All right, fair enough. Well, look, uh, I I want to be respectful of time. I know uh, JP, you're on limited time, so you got ten minutes left. Um, real quick, like so what for... what do you what do you want people to know about Neo Sprint? Just general wholesale. Like what what is there that you want to that you want to say about the game? Maybe there's something from the from the development that you want to say, like. If the floor well, the, is yours. The, the, the game the, the game was made with a lot of love for the Atari brand. That the game was made with a lot of love with the with, with the Sprint IP. Um, we really really try to focus on the small details. We really wanted to make sure that that feeling of the original Sprint was still there. That this was an enjoyable experience. As you can see, one of the things that I like the most, especially in time trial, as I'm seeing it right now with you, <laughs> is that you start playing in time trial and yet you don't realize how long have you been playing or how many <laughs> runs have you already been done because tracks are short sweet and they have that exact point where you don't feel like oh i've been running this for too long and i'm not making any progress because you get to see that progress because every track is 17 seconds 18 seconds 20 <laughs> seconds so um one of the things that we really wanted to do with it especially with the local co-op is that it's something that you can pick up with your friends and then you can run several tracks or even uh grand prix uh campaigns themselves just in general you can set up your tracks and everything and just play with up to eight of your friends uh on the same uh, computer or the same console because right now uh, I believe that we can run eight players on. I think the only one that doesn't run eight is PlayStation, uh, but every other platform allows you to connect up to eight players, and then you can just pick up, play multiple tracks, play multiple races in less than ten minutes, and it's something that you can just pick up and run really fast. 
uh so you don't have to be waiting to set up you don't have to be waiting a uh, long time to set up your load or set up your 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 whatever it is that you need to 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 get ready in in in, in the game to just jump in and just race so yeah. I, i think it allows for a really good party game too because you can just pick it up and just It does. Take a couple of drinks with your friends and just be enjoying how you see your tracks going crazy, your cars going crazy with the jumps and everything. Yeah, it yeah. gets pretty hectic. Like when there were some great, uh, great moments at PAX with four people playing, they were hooting and hollering, you know, smashing into each other. It was a, it is a great, car, a great party game. Yes. Let's bring back more couch, uh, couch competitive play, couch co op play. It's been a big thing we've been getting a lot of our games lately so i think it's it's it has it's it truly is better represented here than uh than really anywhere else so i really uh, I, really, i think that's a great point uh also cool. one, one of the yeah. other things that that i wanted to point out here is the so oh. it was very tricky to get act to actually get all the rendering done in the game because we We had to choose between two things. We had to either have a humongous game because we either had to bake light on every track piece, on every uh, time setting that the game had, because the game has three different time settings. You can play in the in the in the morning, you can play in the afternoon, and you can play at night. So, and we have around what what's it, John? Like two hundred and fifty track pieces or something like it. It's a lot. It, 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 that's not even including variants, I don't think. And then there's the variants and there's the decorations that the game has on each one of the track pieces. And if we wanted to do big lighting into the game, we would have had to have three different uh, light maps on every single piece of the game on every uh, for all the variations that we would have had. So that would have grown the game size a lot. So we decided to let's keep it with real time re uh, light rendering so everything that it's there it's actually taking real time shadows and it's doing real time lighting so that uh, just optimizing the shaders and optimizing the objects in order for it to be able to run on real time with all of the stuff that it's running uh trying to keep it at 30 frames per second for example on the switch that was hectic that was something that was really really challenging but luckily we were able to get it done Absolutely. yeah That's awesome. but it's and it plays uh it plays great on so many different platforms yeah i love totally. playing yeah. on the dcs with the spinner control it's a whole yes. new level Yeah, and I mean, John, and, you know, I, you talk I think about that we have we have P, uh, like VCS players asking. Like, I was so surprised when the game was announced, and right there on the first day, we already have like community posts on Steam page, and people are like asking, "Hey, are you guys going to bring the the spinner support to the Steam version?" And so, I'm going to leave that to you, John. I'm going <laughs> to yeah. leave that those answers to you because there's also people asking about online multiplayer. So mm -hmm. I just gonna leave those answers to you yeah well well the current the game doesn't support online multiplayer at, at this point but it does uh, you know if you're on steam you can do um couch, couch play. play yeah yes and that's uh, and that works perfectly so and it works just 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 exactly the same with the and it steam works and it runs play really play. well on the on the steam deck as well and that's you're also cool. kind of asynchronously racing against other people because of the um because of the the time trials and all that um yep Yeah. Yes. Yes. The asynchronous multiplayer was something that we wanted to do because uh, we didn't really know if there was going to be. We didn't really want to risk having empty servers at some point and just not playing, having players just waiting for 10, 15, 20 minutes just to find someone else to, to run with, to run against. Right now, if you want to race against another player anywhere, you just, you just jump into one of the tracks that currently exist and just play against any ghost. Yeah. And oh, then you and can of play course, against all kinds the of big, players. The other, the other thing that's worth uh, bringing up: uh, cross-platform, cross-platform. Can uh, can I see the tracks from other platforms created in others? You can see the tracks from the VCS on the PC version, but okay. each console is going to have its its own. Let's call it its own sandbox for it to be able to 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 join it. Okay. Um, Good to know. 
if is if there is demand for players and there is something that is something that if people really 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 want it then, then they can ask for it i mean you, you can ask for the hev for heavens if you want yeah. to very very true very true well look i want to be respectful of time um and yeah so i'm actually gonna we're actually gonna skip i'm gonna stop the we're gonna stop the um the stream now and I don't think we have too much time to talk about what we're playing. So instead, I'll just jump right to the question of, uh, you know, JP, where uh, where can people find you if they want to follow you on uh, on social or wherever? Headless Chicken, you name it. Where should they go? They can follow. They can follow me. I I, I tweet a lot on. Uh, I go and tweet in Twitter a lot. Or look, okay, on X. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's Twitter. Go on Twitter. <laughs> So on Twitter, uh, you can find me by at uh, loco08, loco with a K. Um, I tweet a lot of different stuff and, and and a lot, a lot of different stuff. And I tweet a lot in Spanish. So just, just keep that in mind. Uh, we're located in Costa Rica. If you want to um, follow closely what Headless Chicken is doing, then we also have Headless CG on Twitter, Headless Chicken Games on Instagram, and uh, we also have uh, uh, our website, headlesschickengames.com. Uh, you can add yourself to our wish uh, to our mailing list, or and if you want, you can also find us on Discord. Uh, we have a lot of uh, information there, and we're often sharing uh, the stuff of the games that we're currently doing. Um, I love hearing from players. I love hearing from the people that are uh, doing um, any stuff that they want to do. I, I I hope that at some point that this game gets modded in some way so that people are like doing some crazy stuff with it. Um, hopefully, we'll see a lot of players love it. And if there's one single request that I would love to do is for people to wish list the game because we really wanted to see it popping up in people's uh, discovery queue so that people can go like, oh, this one looks interesting. We really like it. Yeah, yeah, totally. Well, thanks for that. And all those links, don't worry about it. If you missed all those, all of them are in the, uh, in the description as well. So just click on those links, follow JP and Headless Chicken, see what they're doing and wishlist the game. I'll say it again before we leave. Don't worry. Don't worry. I will. John, what about you? Where can people find you? Um, <clears throat> I'm on YouTube. Maybe that's the best place to find me. I have a, I don't know. It's an automatic name that was given to me, but it's at John Carter 3072. We'll link that um, as well. Yeah. And uh, I also have another YouTube. If you want to listen to some awesome 80s music mixes, you can check out Chemicon which is K-E-M-I-C-O-N, and that's for all your, your musical needs. That's what, what I listen to all day. So, All right, cool. And uh, you know what? We didn't get into what we're playing, but JP, you did tell me right before that we started recording that you are playing Rebirth. So let's end on controversy. Tifa or Aerith? Oh, Tifa. Tifa. I mean... <laughs> If you ask that's right. me, that's the, that's the right you, answer. Yes, me, it's 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 that's, both, but but if I have to choose, wow. I'll, I'll go with with Tifa. <laughs> so that's so that's what they're doing down there in Costa Rica. All right, cool. <laughs> but yeah, at least you chose the right answer the first time, so that's cool. We'll stick with that. We got the right answer. Um, and yeah, this is uh this is it. So thank you for listening. Uh, thank you, JP, for joining us. Thank you, John, for joining. Thank again. you for having and me. Wish list. And, wish list. And thanks and yes. thanks again for that uh, for that extra for that extra production effort that you've been adding to the podcast and you can actually see in real time it's gotten very meta but yes wishlist the game uh, wishlist neo sprint wishlist lunar lander beyond coming later this month and uh, we'll, we'll probably do another one of these for uh, neo sprint it's very possible we do one of these closer to the release and uh, oh I forgot to mention this as well uh, this is on YouTube. It's also on podcast services. If you have not done so, please subscribe. Please rate us and leave nice comments in the below. Below, I always like to see those. I read them all, and I really appreciate the nice ones. And I I respect the bad ones. So yeah, speak your mind. Till next time. Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye.